Shane Young with Bold Zebras, and this is part two of our two-part series on installing SharePoint 2013 in Microsoft Azure. In part one, you know, we had a wardrobe change from green to red. Well, we're just going to do all green for this video. Uh, but in that video, we kind of did all the prerequisite stuff, right? We went ahead and set up the AD server, the SQL server. We got SharePoint installed, and so we installed SharePoint uh, RTM plus SharePoint Service Pack 1 plus SharePoint June 2016 queuing of updates. We got all three of those installed so the bits are all on the server ready to go. And so in this video we're going to pick right up with creating the farm. So we're going to run some PowerShell to create a farm, run the config wizard, then jump over to central admin, create a bunch of service applications, web apps, my sites, that type of stuff, and get it up and running so you have a fully functional SharePoint 2013 farm running inside of Azure. Now to do this I'll be following along in my premium guide here. And so the premium guide, what this does is this gives you step-by-step -step instructions that you can actually follow at your own pace. So some people can watch a video and build their own production environments, and some people want to read the paper and do little check marks as they go along and build their environment. So if you're the type of person who wants paper, there it is. Um, it's available via the link that's right over there. And also with that, you'll get some PowerShell. So there's a lot of PowerShell we're going to type in here. And once again, I'm going to show it all to you in the video but there'll be PowerShell scripts that come with the premium guide. And then finally with the premium guide you can also get consulting hours, so if you need help planning out your Azure or SharePoint environments, you just need somebody to you know, help you out, hang out with you, you know, you need a therapist, sometimes people just like to chill with me, uh, that's all available via Bold Zebras. But the good news is, is everything that we're going to cover in the uh, guide is here in the video, you're going to see every step, step by step uh, for free, so don't feel like you have to buy anything or go out to our Bold Zebra sites, it's all here in the video, just if you're the type of person who's actually using this to build production, sometimes pen and paper is an easier way to follow along, so we've made that option available to you. Cool? This is also all based on the book that's kind of hiding down there, our SharePoint 2013 install book, we've learned a lot in the, uh, gosh, it's been almost four years I think since that book came out, um, but some of those lessons learned will be uh, available here also. All right, so I think that's a nice long intro, so let's just dive right in and start building ourselves a SharePoint 2013 farm. All right, so as we get started here, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to use the Snap Timer. So it's a little free utility I download off the internet, and what we're going to do there is that just gives you an idea of real time how long this video is taking, because I like to edit out all of the long waiting pieces, so 10, 15 seconds at a time. Also, sometimes if you watch real closely, you can catch me editing out things like cough or the dog barking, but uh, that's not really the purpose. The idea, though, is just to show us how long this really takes from end to end. All right, so then up here I have um, the three VMs that I have created uh, in the previous video, so uh, they're all out on Azure. And we're going to start with the domain controller, so DC1, so I'm going to double click on him. And just like that, I'm logged into the domain controller. If you're watching the timer, you'd notice we kind of skipped ahead because I edited out the loading up to that. All right, so from here, we'll close out from the uh, domain controller. What we want to do is we want to go to Tools and then Active Directory Users and Computers. And so we're going to create seven accounts to uh, use as we go through our SharePoint process. Now, if we expand out here, you will see the SharePoint install accounts already been created. We did that in the previous video because that's the account we logged into the SharePoint server to do all the work as. All right, uh, so the first one we're gonna do is we hit create new user, and this first one's gonna be SharePoint and farm, not Fatom, but farm. Tab down, SP farm, next. And then I've got the password saved in the clipboard to avoid any issues <laughs> with uh, having to type that in a million times. So next and finish. If you have the same password for all your service accounts, which is not recommended for production, um, it is a good way to speed this process up. So we'll do SharePoint service now. Hopefully I don't make any typos because it'll be very glaringly obvious to you guys and when I get stuck by them later, you'll know what I did. So there's SP service. And then next to my list is uh, SharePoint web app. I will tell you guys, I always like to do either, you know, services and web apps, or service and web app. You know, keep the tense the same, so it's a little easier for you to remember in your farm. So next, and finish. 
And then next we're going to do uh, SharePoint user profile. Also keep in mind that all of these accounts are just domain users. We're not giving them any special permissions right now. We're going to come back over here later and give uh, some special permissions, especially to this account. But um, kind of do it all in context, you know, why we're doing it. All right, so there's that one. The next one is SharePoint content. Um, if you ever wonder, this account will I'll show you where it's used so you don't have to wonder for too long. But this is the account that we set up uh, the indexer to actually use to, when it does crawls. Boom and boom. And just two more. SharePoint. Super user. Nope. Oh, typos really bother me. They shouldn't. SP super user. And just like that, that one's done. And so that leaves us with Super Reader to go. Um, I will plug my premium guide right now because if you are a purchaser of that, and this is going to be Super uh, Reader, if you do, um, if you do use the guide, you get a script that will go ahead and create all these for you. And the nice thing is it does it based on a CSV file, and so without being a CSV file what happens is if you want to add other test users, so you want to put your dog, your cat, and all those fun people in there, then that's no problem because you just edit the CSV file and then you just run it and it'll blow all these accounts in there for you. So once again, not necessary, but saves a lot of that typing because developing carpal tunnel from all this. All right, so that takes care of that. So then we'll minimize the um, AD server because that's all we need to do here for right now. And on the SQL server, uh, we normally would have to make some changes there, but we did all that in the previous video as well, right? Uh, the max ops, we set up the security, we opened up the firewall. So the SQL Server should be good, so we shouldn't need that for right now. So on the SharePoint box, we'll go ahead and log into there. All right, so it's still open from where I had all the patches um, and things done earlier, so we'll close out of that. And so now what we need to do uh, as a first step is we're actually going to create part of the farm with PowerShell. So I'm going to hit Start. And right here, I've got the SharePoint 2013 management shell. So I'm going to right click on this guy. And it's very important that you do this, but you've got to run it as administrator. Now, if you don't run it as administrator, things aren't going to work right. They're not going to work at all. So we'll click yes. And we're going to get a message this local farm is not accessible. This time, that's OK, right? Because there is no farm. In the future, if you get that message, you probably didn't run it as administrator. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to make a couple changes real quick. And so to do that, I'm going to do Properties. And I'm going to enable Quick Edit Mode. That makes cutting and pasting with PowerShell a lot easier. And then on the font, what I found is that 10 by 18 is the biggest font. And then for colors, I like screen text of this neon green. I don't know why. I have no explanation. I've just done it this way forever, so bear with me. So click OK. So hopefully that's a little bigger, a little easier for you guys to read now. And then before we jump in and start running a bunch of PowerShell, what I want to do is I want to do something called start-transcript. And so hit enter. And so what that's going to do is it's going to write everything that we do to that text file. So all the commands we run and all the output that we see here. So this is a great tool to go back and troubleshoot with later. Right? You can see what you did, what you didn't do, uh, what errors you might have gotten that you didn't see. Maybe things scrolled through the buffer too fast and you missed them. So start-transcript is just a great way to start out every PowerShell session, especially when you're new and learning. Because a lot of times what I used to find when I was learning is I'd figure out how to do something, I'd close the PowerShell session, I'd come back and I'd be like, man, how did I do that yesterday? And I have to kind of relearn. So you start transcript uh, as often as you can. All right, so I'm going to type in CLS here just to clear the screen off so we're working from a clean screen. And so we want to create our farms. So we're going to do new SP configuration database. And I'm using tab complete. You're going to use tab complete a lot to save yourself some typing. I'm going to do dash D for database name. And for that, I'm going to name it SharePoint underscore config, underscore config, then space, and then D again. And that's times database server. And so our database server is named SQL1. And then administration content database name. So this is the whole reason you actually did this. And so that is because you want to be able to name this database something reasonable. And so we're going to name it admin content db. Uh, 
If you don't run this, if you just go straight to the config wizard, what happens is that database gets created and its name's about yay long. No one likes that. So we're going to hit enter. You're going to get prompted for an account. It's very easy to say, oh, I need to put in my, um, my username and password or the domain administrator. Nope. What you want to put in here is what you want the farm account to be. So in our case, it's going to be Contoso SP Farm. And then my password. And we're going to click OK. You also need to input the passphrase. And so to do that, I'm going to right click, right? That's the, why I did the quick edit mode. So that's going to paste from the buffer as well and go. The passphrase does have to be a secure string, right? So upper, lower case, special characters, numbers, all that fun stuff. So make sure that you uh, have a good passphrase. You know it and uh, that you're not using the same as your password like I am to make this go a little faster. All right, so this is going to start creating. And while it does, I'm going to hit pause. So I'll see you in a second. So that took just shy of five minutes, not terrible. All right, so now that that's done, our two databases are in place, what we're going to do is we're going to hit our little start button again. And we're going to go and we want to run the SharePoint 2013 products configuration wizard. So we're going to click on that. Yes, we want to run that. And it says, welcome to SharePoint products. We'll click next. Hey, we're we going to stop your farm, no problem, because we're uh, good, so we'll hit yes. Do not disconnect, right? Don't undo all the work we just did. So next. And then for central admin, I always like to put it on port 5555. I have no reason. I've just been doing it that way for like 12 years now. So put it on a well-known good port. Uh, my buddy Todd does 1026, which is his anniversary. You know, whatever works for you, just have a port number and make sure there's no conflicts. So you want to do it somewhere above 1024. All right, so there's next. And it's like, all right, ready to go. All right, well, good, hit next. And notice here it jumps straight to step four and then to five. So the reason for that is because the other steps we just did with PowerShell. Technically, we could have done all of these steps with PowerShell, but remember the whole, my wrist hurts, I don't want to type too much. Um, so I, there's no upside for me to typing all that stuff in via PowerShell. So I just type the bare necessities in PowerShell, and then I run the wizard to do the rest of the work. Get the same end result, a lot less typing. So once again, I'll hit pause while this runs, and I'll see you in a second. All right, well, good news for me. SharePoint's feeling pretty peppy. That went quick. So we're going to click Finish. And so now Central Admin's going to open for us. And so here it says, hey, do you want to sign up for customer improvement? Of course I do. Yes. Say OK. And we'll expand this out so it takes up the whole place because we're going to spend a lot of time there. So get some room. And so what are we going to do? How do you want to configure your SharePoint farm? Well, this is what we used to refer to as the White Wizard. Who made up that name? This guy. Had I just seen Lord of the Rings recently? I had the Gray Wizard, Config Wizard, the White Wizard, and Central Admin maybe. Nerd humor. Gotta love it. Um, so you could run the white wizard here and what it would do is it would create all the service applications for you and really take away the need to watch this video. The downside of it is it does a lot of wonky stuff that's probably not really scalable for production and the database names are this big and nasty and your DBAs will hate you. So in the interest of keeping everyone happy, you know me because I want you to watch the video and your DBAs because they don't like database names and your users because they want functionality, we're going to cancel out of this. And so now that we're at the home of Central Admin, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to Manage uh, Service Applications. We're going to spend a lot of time here. Most of the next uh, whatever amount of time we're going to spend together, actually. And so here you can see there's two service apps. There's a new button. Lots of fun stuff to be had here. But unfortunately, the new button doesn't have everything we want. So there's two service apps that we need to create manually via PowerShell before we can continue on. So we're going to switch back over to PowerShell. And we'll do our friend CLS again to clear the screen. So we're starting from afresh. And so the first one, lots of typing coming, is it's going to be to create the state service. What we're going to do is we're going to do a new SP state service application and dash name, right? Lots of tab completes. And then quotes, oh, it helps if I spell it right, state service application. Hit enter. So that creates the state service application. Now we're going to do get SP state service application and we're going to pipe that over to new SP state service application proxy. So hit tab twice there and we're going to do dash default proxy group. So create a new proxy put it in the proxy group. Thank you. Then we're going to do the same type of thing again, get SP state service application, pipe it over, and we're going to do new 
SP state service hit tab twice that time database and then dash name we're going to do state service DB and then dash database server is our friend SQL one we'll capitalize that it looks better just like that it doesn't matter you don't have to capitalize it all right last one a little more get SP oh, SP database and we're gonna pipe that over to where dash object object easy for me to spell and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that in little parentheses and then we're gonna do dollar sign underscore dot type dash EQ which means equal but don't do an equal sign that does bad things yeah rename all your databases to be quite honest Microsoft dot office dot server dot administration dot state you gotta spell it right state database close the quotes close the bracket and then one more time pipe to initialize initialize SP state service database oh hands hurt but now we have a state service right if we switch back over here and hit refresh boom state service created now you know I'm not saying but if you did the premium guide you just type in like three characters and that was all done for you it's amazing all right so we're gonna quit the screen again and so the other service application that we need to create is the uh, usage and health database uh, or service application so it's a little easier a little less typing so what we're going to do is a new dash sp uh, usage application there a little tab complete dash name usage and health wish I wasn't ex uh, obsessed with getting the uh, punctuation right data collection so boom just like that that makes our new usage application after a few seconds okay that finished and so now we want to do dollar sign proxy equals get SP service application tab a few times proxy and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say where another one is weird statements coming that weird break bracket dollar sign underscore dot type name this time so not type but type name this time dash EQ for equals usage and health data collection proxy close that close that hit enter and then dollar sign proxy dot provision close the little parenthesis and boom all right so a little bit of typing there a little funky we won't get into the pros and cons of how we did all that but it does provision the service app for us if we go over here and hit refresh boom it's also I apologize it's probably painful listening to me type out those commands because I have to you know kind of enunciate and go as I do but if you're only listening it probably works out well so yeah what do you do either way that gets our two uh, service applications taken care of for us. So now what we need to do is we need to go and create the rest of them. But before we do that, to save ourselves a little grief, we're going to actually make a, another change real quick. And so we're going to go over to security. All right, it turns out order with this stuff is the key to all, everything. And what we want to do is we want to configure managed accounts. So managed accounts is where SharePoint stores one instance of the account with a username and password and it can manage it. So change the password, uh, you know, change it so you don't know it, keep it updated with schedule, things like that. All that's done via managed accounts in one place, and then we're just going to reference this managed account in other places. It's kind of cool. So it already set up SP Farm for us, but now we're going to click on register managed account. We need to register two more accounts. The first account we're going to register is going to be Contoso SP underscore service. And then there's our password. We'll leave everything else alone. Say OK. Boom, that's registered. And so now we'll register the other one is Contoso SP web app 
and then there's our password for that and we'll click OK. Alright so now we have our two managed accounts, well three counting the farm, but we put in two and so now we're ready to go and create our service apps. So we go to application management and manage service applications again and we're going to hit the new button for the drop down and so there's a lot of different service applications here and what we're going to do is we're going to configure the ones I consider the core ones so you know just the ones that if I was setting up your farm you are like I don't know what I'm going to use SharePoint for give me give me the basics these are the ones I would put in place because we're not going to do things like access services the reason for that is if you want to set up access services that's a whole project in my book right you'd have to come in here and set up the app management service set up a namespace there's a whole bunch of work and you'd want to kind of think through all the ramifications of all the databases it's going to create so I don't want to just provision that for you and have it start running wild without you having that uh, context so instead that's kind of its own little project alright so the first one that I consider core is the business data connectivity service so I'm going to click on that and we're going to name it just that the business data connectivity service. There you guys go listen to me you know, speak real slowly again. Database servers right. The database name is terrible. We do not want all these extra characters in our name. That's the whole reason we're doing all this work. So we're going to delete those off so we have a nice clean database name. Then we're going to scroll down here and we need to create a new uh, application pool and so for that we're going to do the default service app pool just like that. And then for configurable, what accounts do we want that service app to run as? Hit the drop down. Ah, uh, that's why we set up SP Service a second ago. So it would be here in the drop down. Because if you click on this link, it would delete all that hard typing we did. Remember, I don't want to type anymore. So, yay. So we'll click OK. So now this is going to provision, and I'm going to pause. All right, so that actually didn't take too long. This server is running pretty peppy today. Yay, Azure. So we'll click OK. So now the state service application has been uh, provisioned, what we need to do is we need to start the service on server to actually provide that uh, capability. So what I want you to do is I'm going to click on uh, application management, I'm going to right click and say open a new tab, and so then over here we want to manage services on server. And if we scroll down a little bit we're going to see that there is a business data connectivity service right here, it's currently stopped, and so we're going to hit start. Now, in this environment, we just have one SharePoint server, so we're obviously going to start them all right here on server SP1. But if you had a multi tiered uh, farm, you want to have an app server, you know, so you want this service running on a specific server, you could hit this and then select your correct server, and then you'd be able to uh, start the service there, because that's how it really determines where that service runs. Cool? All right. So that's the services on server tab. We're going to flip back over to this one. It's just easier to have the two tabs because we kind of do a lot of back and forth. So hit new, and the next one here, um, sometimes I do Excel services because he's you know pretty easy to set up, but in reality he's not a core service. Most people don't use him without a lot of forethought as well, so we'll skip him for today. Machine translation requires some Bing stuff, yikes. So next one we'll do here is manage metadata. And so for here we're going to name this the managed metadata service. And for the database name, we're going to do managed underscore metadata, metadata service DB. Now remember, I'm always using underscores because um, spaces are just as bad as good, goods and things, right? We don't want long names. They cause the data, DBA's problems. And spaces, if they don't escape out in their management scripts, can cause them to crash as well. So we just uh, avoid any issues whatsoever. Tell your DBA to buy you a brownie because you're doing nice things for him today. All right, so then here for application pool, we want to set, use existing, and we're going to do default service app pool. Yay. Uh, we don't have a content hub to specify right now. If you had um, someone who's doing some of the content type stuff, whether it be site columns or you know content types across the things, they'd want to come in and set this, but they would do that after the fact, after they kind of got that infrastructure set up. So nothing for us to do here, so say OK. And the weird thing here is I clicked OK and it just acts like I didn't do anything. It's just normal behavior. Just click OK, trust yourself you hit it, and wait 30 seconds and as you can see it pops up. And then we're going to jump over to the services on server and we're going to hit the manage metadata web service right there and boom we're going to hit start. And so now we have the manage metadata available also. 
So we'll switch back over here. And new in our list, we're not going to do performance point. That's a crazy one. And so next what we're going to do is we're going to do the search service application. Now the search service application is a special beast to say the least. And the reason for that is if you provision it from here, what's going to happen is it's going to create four databases and they're all going to have names this big. And you know how I feel about names this big, right? Someone at Microsoft's trying to run the worlds out of GUID one SharePoint database at a time. It's not happening on my watch. So instead we're going to do this via PowerShell. So switch over to PowerShell. With PowerShell open, what we're going to do is hit CLS as always. And so this group of PowerShell is just way too much. It is just an untypable amount of PowerShell. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to paste in all this PowerShell. So I'm going to right click. So that's going to start uh, running it. And what I'll do is if you look down in the comments, because I can't do it via one of the little pop-ups because it's not a link to my site, but if you go down in the comments, um, I'll have a link to a blog post by Todd Quint, um, and it's just www.toddquint.com slash create search 2013, all one piece. And from there, you can download the exact same PowerShell that I just used here. Well, maybe not exact. I made some edits to, because I like to clean up Todd's ugly PowerShell. But you can download the PowerShell from him and get the search thing. Or if you're using the premium guide, then I created a uh, clickable file that just does this all for you. But either way, that's a lot of PowerShell. Um, it's complicated. It's not even complicated. It's just, just pain in the butt. So we're going to let this run. And while it runs, I will figure out why the timer is not up. I don't know. There's a timer. So while this runs, um, I'll be back in a second. Yay, it finished. All those compliments I gave about running really fast earlier seem to not hold true for the search portion, but what do you do? All right, so that's done. So what we'll do is we'll go over here and we'll hit refresh. And we should see that our search service application is here. If we go to services on server, there are search services, but you don't want to mess with any of these, right? SharePoint manages all of these for you, so don't uh, go over here and fucking need to start any of the search stuff. Now, I do want to go back to search and make one quick change. So I'm going to click on search. And so by default, it sets itself up to use the SP farm count to index everything. So whether it's indexing SharePoint content or if you tell it to go crawl file share or something like that, it's always going to use SP farm. That's bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on that and we're going to change Contoso SP farm to be Contoso SP content account we created earlier. We will grab the password from down yonder because I don't want to type it in. And then we'll scroll down and click OK. So then now it's going to use that account going forward to index all your content. So if you're troubleshooting why can't search get to something, it's that account you need to worry about, not farm, not the service app account, any of that stuff. Got it? All right. So back over to Central Admin and Manage Service Applications. It's like the only page we go to. We're going to click New. And on the drop down here, the next up is a Secure Store. This is a pretty easy one for you. So name's going to be Secure Store Service. Oh, there's another terrible GUID, right? Microsoft just trying to use them all up. Delete it out. Good clean database name. And then app pool, default service app pool. That's what we wanted. So we'll click OK. And so this shouldn't take too long, but you know, we know better. So I'm going to hit pause when it does. And I got our timer back. I do not know why. Anytime I, ugh, the timer's set to always be on top, but it just sometimes doesn't want to be on top. What do you do? It's a little booger. It's free though, so I guess I got it paid for. All right, so that was created. Click OK. You don't want to hear me whine about the timer. Oh, see, it left again. Ha ha, I saw it that time though. It's back. And so now we're going to services on server. And for the secure store service right here, we're going to scroll up. Um, and actually, we might have to slide me over. So if I slide over right now, you know why, but we hit start. All right, so I get the secure store started. So we'll switch back over to manage service apps. And here there's one change we want to make also. So we'll click on the service app and say, hey, before creating a new one, you know, uh, you got to generate a key, which we're going to do. Also, we're getting a warning message about autocomplete. I don't know why. So we'll just say no to that. So generate new key. One of my pet peeves in SharePoint, you know, the difference between pass space phrases and the pass phrase all one word we did earlier? It's the space. I do not know why they choose to 
spell it one way here and one way the other. It's just to drive me nuts. But we've covered that. There's one more thing that's coming up like this. Anyway, click OK. All right, so now the secure store is all set up. And we'll go back over to Central Admin and Manage Service Applications and New. And so next up on our list is the User Profile Service App. Oh, this is like the hardest part of all of SharePoint 2013. And in order to uh, do this, the first step actually is we're going to jump back over to the AD server. So we'll minimize this guy. And here's our AD server. Hey, it was still up. Nice. And the timer stayed up. Good job, timer. All right, so a couple of things we need to do here. Several, actually. Uh, three. All right, so the first one we're going to do is we're going to go into Tools. And we're going to click on DNS. We need to make uh, two DNS entries, one for the My Site Host site collection and one for a portal. And so to do that, we're going to click on DC1 and Forward Lookup Zone and Contoso.com, just like that. And then we're going to right click on Contoso.com and say New Host. And we're going to say My, and we're going to give it the IP address of 10.0.0.6. That is the IP address of our SharePoint server. Say Add Host. It was successful, good, and so we're going to do the same thing for portal 10.0.0.6. Add host, OK, and done. So you want to double check and make sure you got that right. So here's my SP1 server, it's 10.0.0.6, so that's what these two need to be. So if yours are different, because it could be depending on how many VMs you have, what other shenanigans you might have pulled to this point, make sure those are correct. Um, also, you know, we're using dynamic IP addresses. We know that Azure is going to try to keep those same IPs for those same servers. But if you are in an environment where your IPs change a lot for your servers, it'd be weird, but it could happen, you might want to consider using CNAME records and just pointing these two at that server. The downside of CNAME records is if you do anything, authentication stuff like Kerberos especially, they just don't work with CNAME. CNAMEs cause a lot of issues, so don't use them unless you have to. But if you do, you do. All right. So that gets our DNS entries fixed. So that was the first step. All right, so then the next step is we need to set up the user profile account to do some special things for us. So we're going to open up uh, our friend Active Directory Users and Computers again. And we need to make, we're going to make three changes here. So the first change, just for this, is we're going to go over here to Contoso.com. We're going to right click and we're going to say Delegate Control. Next. Add a user, and we're going to do our friend SP user profile. Click OK. Hit Next, and we're going to say create a custom task to delegate. So Next. And this folder existing, yep, so Next. And then here what you need to do is you need to scroll down just a little bit, and you need to find replicating directory changes. If you have a different version of AD, it could say replicating directory change. Either way, you need to select that box, and say Next, and Finish. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow uh, the user profile account to interact with a change log for AD. It's not going to let it edit AD, it's not going to let it do any chain modifications or anything bad, it's just letting it read the change log. So that way when it does an import, it's just importing the changes instead of having to import everything. So it's lowering the load on the AD server. When you ask your Active Directory admins to make this change, they're probably going to freak out. You're just going to have to coax them through it because it's absolutely required. Now, brief pause there because I needed a drink of water. Uh, so the next step here is we're going to go over here to this built-in group and we expand this out a little bit. There is a pre-Windows 2000 compatibility access. Double click on that guy. Members, add, SP user profile, click OK, and OK. Now in reality this is only required if you have an older version of Active Directory with some weird settings and stuff. But what I found is, A, most people don't really know what their Active Directory settings are, so they don't know if they meet that criteria or not. And B, starting a user profile sync service is hard, and making that change is easy. So I just like to do it pretty much 100% of the time. So for what it's worth, I always make that change as well. The third change is a little scary, not going to lie. We're going to hit Start, and we're going to type in ADSI. It's going to open up a tool called ADSI Edit. We're going to right click on this and say connect to and we're going to change default naming context to configuration and click OK. So if you're not familiar with ADSI edit, the best way that I can describe it for you is it's like regedit for your entire Active Directory. You can do really terrible things in here. 
So you need to be very careful. If you just do the couple of steps I'm going to show you and get out of here as fast as possible, you'll be in good shape. Don't go exploring. Don't go playing with this guy. So we're going to double-click on configuration, and then we're going to right-click on this container, and we're going to say properties, and security, and add, and your good buddy SP user profile. And we're going to scroll down just a little bit, and there's a replicating directory changes. We're going to click that, apply, OK, and close this guy as fast as we can. Shoo! We did not tear up anything. Um, you do have to be an enterprise admin to get in there, so if you have security issues, just a little troubleshooting tip there for you. OK, so I think that gets us all of the AD stuff. Um, actually, I'm going to hit pause real quick. Sorry, I had to scratch my nose. Um, and so then now that that's done, what we're going to get out of the AD server again. So close this. And I've still got the SharePoint server down here somewhere. There he is. And so now back over on the SharePoint server, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create two web applications. So click on Application Management and Manage Web Applications and say New. And so the first one we're going to create here is we're going to call it my. So we're going to my.contoso.com. And we're going to slide our friend the snap timer over a little bit just so he's not annoying for this prompts. And then we're going to scroll down. So that's all looks good, 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 good. And so here we're going to say create a new app pool. And I like to call this something like, um, you know, my SharePoint content app pool. And then for the service account, this time we want to choose SP Web App. All right, so that looks good to me. And then for the database name, I'm going to name this WSS underscore content underscore my. I try and keep my database names correlated to the host header that I'm using for the web app. It just makes it a little easier when the data, DBA calls me up and says, hey, this database is 4,000 gigs. Why is that? And when he gives me the name, if he says, slash my, I know, well, my sites are 4,000 gigs, whatever 4,000 gigs is, I think it's called 4 terabytes, but you get the point. So make those names easy to correlate. So scroll down, this all is fine, so we'll click OK, and we'll hit pause when this happens. Thanks to the magic of pause, that's all done, so you can see that looks good, boom, 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 so we'll click OK. Oh, and their timer just disappears for no reason. I was about to compliment him on not disappearing, and then he does, goes and runs away. So then now we want to do the same exact steps, or roughly the same steps, but for our portal web app. Not because we need it at this point, just because I figured if we're here, we might as well go ahead and create it. So we'll do port. We got to fix that and make that 80, and this will be portal.contoso.com. Scroll down a little bit. And so this time we want to use existing app pool. And there's our SharePoint content app pool. And then we want to change the database name to WSS underscore content underscore portal. Just like that. And we'll say OK. All right, and that one created just a little bit faster, so I appreciate that. We'll click OK. All right, so we have our two web apps. So now back to application management, and we need to create site collections. I would point out that we're only going to create one at a time, yet that command is plural should say create site collection once again me and SharePoint not friends all the time so for title here we're gonna do my site host and then we're gonna click on enterprise and my site host template all right so that's gonna be the root of the my sites uh, for your environment for the primary site collection administrator I'm gonna do SP install because that's who I'm installed here or logged in as in your production environment you would want to think through a little better who this is and then I also need to have a secondary one. I always recommend everyone has a secondary one. It just keeps you out of trouble. I've seen issues before. People only had one. That account got deleted. It, SharePoint got really mad. So avoid that. So then we will slide me over here real quick and say OK. All right. Now that that's finished, we'll click OK again. And I want to create site collections. I'm going to go ahead and put one at the root of the portal as well. So for web app, we're going to hit the drop down here, change web app, and we're going to select portal. I'm going to say our portal. And then I'll just use a team site. I don't really care what it is. And then for the username, once again, I'm going to use NSP install, cut some logged in as, and good old Contoso Shane, because that's convenient. Um, also, quotas. So I'll hit OK and talk about quotas for a second. 
So I don't have a quota on these site collections. I'm a bad person for it, right? I'm a firm believer that every site collection in the world should have a quota. So do as I say, not as I do. Um, quotas just keep you out of trouble. You know, even if you're like, well, my portal, I don't want to limit what can go out there. I want it to be able to get as big as it needs. Well, how big is that? Oh, well, that's probably 10 gigs. Set the quota to 50 gigs. I don't care. As long as it's at a spot that is manageable, if it somehow, some way grows that big, because if you bounce up against that 50 gig quota, you'd be like, oh, well, that was really bad. I'm glad that Shane had me set that before that database got out of control. I've seen people set up jobs to write stuff automatically to libraries or having people interns copy stuff over. And just, you know, that site that they thought was only going to be a gig ended up being 200 gigs over a week of someone diligently dragging and dropping stuff into it. So quotas, they're your friend. All right, so that finished. Click OK. We're so close, folks, to being able to create the user profile service app. So close. One more thing, I think. Let's start. And what I need to do, we talked about it earlier, we're going to run our friend RegEdit. There he is. And click yes. Okay, so the last thing we need to do here is we need to set up or disable loopback checking. So let's find it and I'll explain what it is. So HT local machine system current control set control LSA wherever he's at. There he is. LSA. I also noticed the timer's missing again. That little varmint. LSA. All right. So in this LA LSA folder. What we want to do is we want to right click and do a new D word. We're going to do disable loop loop back check. And then we're going to edit it and we're going to change it from zero to one. So I'll just expand that out so you can see it. And we'll move the timer over so you can see the path. All right. So the idea of the loop back check is that it's a security mechanism that got put into Windows. I don't know, 10, yeah, we'll say about 10 years ago. And what it does is it says, you know, if you're trying to access this server, so you're on the SharePoint server, and you're trying to access a resource on the SharePoint server, and you're calling it by a name other than itself, you're probably trying to do something bad. So if you're on the SharePoint server and you type in my.contoso.com and you try to go, and that's being hosted on the same machine, it knows that this server's name is not my. So it's like, what is this guy up to? Why is he a bad person? And it will just block the access. Great security mechanism, but it really breaks things like search indexing and troubleshooting from the local search or the SharePoint server's desktop. So that's called the loopback check. So one method, when we just employed here, is to disable that loopback check altogether. Turn off that security feature. It's very effective. <laughs> It's, uh, but it's also very bad because it makes it so that that hack is now uh, able to be exploited on your machine. So down below, I will link to the KB article. There's a second method where you can come in here and you can specify just disable loopback check for my.contoso.com and portal.contoso.com. Now you're saying, well, why don't I just show you that method? The reason I don't show you that method, hmm, I knew you'd ask, is um, it's all about maintenance, quite frankly. So while it's easy for me to set up the server for you, I come into your environment, I build your environment, I set it up perfect like that. Well, a month from now, you decide to add team.contoso.com and it doesn't work. And you just cuss at that consultant who really just screwed up your environment. Why doesn't anything work? It's all held together with bubble gum. In reality, it's because you didn't remember that I explicitly showed you you had to go in and manually add an entry for team.contoso.com. So, when I set it up, I explain all this to people, and I just, they, everyone just nods their head and agrees, just turn it off altogether, we'll take our chances. So, you've been warned, look down below if you want to figure out how to do it the other way, but 99% of the world, this is what they do. Shh, don't tell anybody. All right, so that's done. We'll close out, and I'm going to open a third tab here, and we're going to be real brave, and we're going to type in portal.contoso.com. So the reason that I like to do this, um, it's just a good test at this point to make sure that you got the DNS entry set up right, you created the web app, you created the site collection, and that you uh, disabled the loopback check. So we'll do sp underscore install, and then pass, oh, no, nope, that's not the password. That's the password. And then I'll hit pause for a second while this uh, loads. 
Oh, look at that. That's the sweet view of success, right? I know it's going to work at this point. Yay. Um, you did notice I had to log in. That's because portal.contoso.com is not uh, trusted, if you will. So if you didn't want to have to worry about login prompts and things like that, right? That's an IE setting over here, so internet options. And then what I would probably do is I would say um, either put portal.contoso.com in the local intranet zone. So you could do sites and then advanced and then manually add it because click OK because one of the custom level settings here if you scroll to the bottom is automatically log in in the internet zone so it would have passed it Contoso SP install because that's who I'm logged into this machine as so that's one way of doing it another way is to put it into trusted sites and then change the trusted sites to automatically log people in um, either way works just fine so there you go you learned something new today as well and I wasn't really going to sit here and wait on this, but I know if I don't wait, you're going to think, oh, it really didn't work. Shane, uh, Shane fibbed to us. So I'll hit pause again until this finishes. All right, so there's a minute of my life I'm not going to get back, but it proves to you everything works. Woohoo! Um, sometimes if it's working, it keeps spinning forever. Just hit refresh. Sometimes speeds it along. So, all right. I think we've done it, guys. We're ready to go over back to application management, manage service applications new user profile service application oh I'm so stressed right now because this is the scariest part of this whole video so name user profile service we're going to use the existing app pool scroll down a little bit and so here um, what I like to do with the database names because they have spaces so you gotta fix them so I'm gonna do user underscore profile underscore DB and the idea is I, there's four databases three databases I forget I think there's four uh, four databases here and so we want them all to start with user so that way they're grouped together in a SQL right back to that whole the DBA is yelling at me I like to make my life as easy as possible so then we're going to change this one to the user sync DB and then we're going to change this one to the user social DB. Fun fact, in 2016 they uh, take away the ability to do this. You have to do it in PowerShell because they don't let me name the databases anymore. Very annoying. Oh, and it was only three databases. All right. So here, uh, my site host URL. Well, that's the guy we just built, right? W or HTTP my.contoso.com. So, boom. We'll host those in the personal. I like to use this setting right here. Uh, this, this says, because it automatically creates my sites when a user goes to it for the first time. Well, this will just take care of resolving any conflicts. So the first person to come in will be slash Shane. If another Shane comes in, it'll be like, oh, well, that's um, Contoso underscore Shane. So it kind of deals with that for you. It cuts down on support calls later, so set that one. And then they're offering to let me use Yammer. Yeah, I'll stick with on-prem for right now. So we'll click Create. All right, so fortunately, that's not the nerve-wracking part. So that works. It took a minute or whatever, so we'll click OK. And so now we need to go over to Services on Server. And if I haven't already slid myself over, I'm definitely going to slide myself over now so you can see. Whoop. And so right there, we're going to click on um, Start for the User Profile Service. This one is also not a high-stress one. You can see User Profile Service. It started, no problem. <sighs> Stress time. So the user profile synchronization service, we're going to hit start. And when we get here, it's going to say, look, um, I'm going to start this one as the SP farm. Well, that's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. Uh, so it wants to start the service as that account. Well, that account has to be a local administrator for all this to work. SP farm is currently not a local administrator. So now we need to go through this whole process. So we're going to go back over to friend server manager. And we're going to go to Tools and Computer Management and expand out local users and groups, groups and administrators. Click Add. Now you're probably thinking, why didn't we just do this a long time ago when we were in here the last time? Could have. The problem is I like to do everything with context, and so it wouldn't have made sense why I was doing it, you know, an hour ago in video time. So I like to do it now, but it does cause a little pain. So we'll say OK. So SP Farm is now in there, but unfortunately SP Farm, because it's already logged in and running other services, it's not going to pick up its change 
short of a reboot. Oh, so we're going to go ahead and shut this VM down. So we'll click over here to get the charms to appear. There they are. Settings, power, 2012R2, so much better. And say restart. Continue. All right, so while that restarts, I'll hit pause and I will bring you back when I'm logged into the desktop and I have central administration open. That way you don't have to wait on any of that stuff. So see you in a sec. All right, so now we're up. I got the timer back running. I got a cute little green bar saying, hey, get this stuff from Office 365. That's for another video. Uh, so we're going to go back to our managed services on server. And now it's time to put on my brave face. So here's the user profile synchronization service. We're going to hit start. It wants to know what my username and password, or my password is, because it already knows my username. It's telling me I have to use that one. And we're going to click OK. So this is going to start um, firing. And I'm going to hit pause and be real nervous. So hopefully I come back happy. Success! Oh my goodness, it started. You can tell how beaten and battered I've been by this process that even in a controlled environment like this where there's no chance it's going to fail, I'm still freaked out for the couple minutes it takes to start it. In case you're wondering what happened over here in the background is actually if you look at Windows Services, it went ahead and configured these two forefront identity management services to run as SP Farm, and so then it fired them up and started them. Um, so that was the reason that SP Farm had to be a local administrator. Now, in reality, what you could do is you could actually uh, take SP Farm out of the local administrators group. You just need to make sure that it had like log on locally and run as a service um, set. So make sure there's no group policies or anything like that or overrunning it. But the problem becomes is if anything gets reset and someone has to start or stop the service again, you know, maintenance, service packs, that type of thing, it's real easy for this all to get broken again. If you not to remember, you had to make it a local admin to fix it all. So once again, not best practice, but I can tell you that most of my customers just leave SP Farm in the local administrator group. Terrible idea. Lazy admins do it a lot. And I'm one of them. Shh. All right. Anyway, that is started. Oh, happy day. So here we're going to go over here to application management and manage service applications and user profile service. Yeah, because we can do that now. And what we want to do is we want to configure a synchronization connection, right? Because currently the number of user profiles is one. There's more than one person in my AD. Oh, that's the wrong button. So configure synchronization connections. I'm going to say create a new connection. And we're just going to call it, I don't know, AD. Our forest name is contoso.com. And then the account name. So this is where you guys need to take advantage of our Frank and Toso SP underscore user profile and then his silly password, All right? Because that's the account that we gave all the permissions. So SP Farm's running the service, but when it goes to talk to AD, that's the account it's going to use. And so we hit populate containers. If that shows up, you're, you're moving in the right direction. And so now you can expand and select what you want to do. I'm just going to pull in all of the users um, container. So that all looks good. So we'll scroll to the bottom and say OK. All right, so that's good. Another annoyance of SharePoint. I complain a lot. I don't. I do, don't I? Click on Application Management. There's no way to get back to the User Profile Service from here. So we go to Application Management, Manage Service Applications, and User Profile Service again. Ugh. So now we want to do right. We're still at one because we just set up a connection. So now we actually actually run a sync. So we're going to say Start Profile Synchronization and do a full sync right now. And then what I'll often do is just sit here and hit refresh until over on the uh, right, you'll see it switch from idle to, there we go, synchronizing. So now we know things are happening. And so we'll do a lot of refreshing here. And bamo whammo, you just have to hit pause and then it gets done. And so now I have 12 profiles that have been imported. So. We should be in good shape. User profile services are working. Yay. All right. Um, so that gets us all of that. We go back to the home page of Central Admin. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to give, oh, we lost our timer again. Come back to your timer. So what we need to do is we need to give the user, the search account access to the user profile service application. So we're gonna say manage service applications. And we're gonna click over here to the right of user profile service so it highlights it. 
and then we're going to click administrators we're going to type in sp underscore content that account we created a minute ago just like that we'll click add and then down here we need to say retrieve people data for search crawlers so boom just like that so then now what we need to do is go to the search service application and this goes back to we're just brave people folks we're gonna to go to content sources we're gonna click on local SharePoint sites and we should see that everything's set up in there nice and good for us yay so we'll say okay we're gonna say um, hover over this guy and we're gonna say start a full crawl are you sure you want to start a full crawl of course I am so then that's going to start and while that runs I'll hit pause all right so that finished up and I as soon as I hit start I realized I made a boo-boo uh, so if we click on crawl log you'll see that everything was successful there's two warnings they're both janky warnings we don't care about but back under content sources the thing that I need to do is click on that we actually need to add one here and we need to add SPS3 colon whack whack my dot contoso dot com and so that is how it would index the uh, user profiles so people search wouldn't work until I did that setting so that was a, a boo boo on my part so say okay and we will run another full crawl and we'll just kind of carry on but that was uh, something I should have done so anyway click okay and so now what I want to do is I want to go back to central admin while that runs and the very last piece of uh, cleanup maintenance oh, we're so close to done hopefully this video is going to be right under an hour um, is we need to go in and manage web apps and we're going to click on portal and what we want to do is remember we created a super user and super reader accounts well what will happen is SharePoint will give you error messages about not being able to cache properly because you don't have those set up so what we want to do is we want to set those up real quick. So we're going to do is user policy, and we're going to add a user next, and we're going to do sp super user. And we're going to give him full control. Say finish, and then we're going to add another user next, sp super reader, and give it full read. How'd you ever guess? All right, so that gets those two accounts set up, and you can see the spacing I missed. How rude of me! Uh, but so those are defined, and so that now that those are defined, we need to open up our friend PowerShell again. So start. Oh, I said start. SharePoint 2013 management shell. Right. We're going to right click, and we're going to say run as administrator. Yes. We're going to click on it we're going to do start dash transcript because you should always do that we'll clear the screen and so what we want to do is we're going to go dollar sign variable I don't know whatever you want to name it equals get SP web application and then HTTP portal dot contoso dot com boom and then we're going to say dollar sign variable or var dot been easier to type properties and we're going to do a bracket so a different funny looking character I'm going to say portal super user account close that hit that equals contoso sp super user just like that Of course, it would help if you put Contoso in quotes. There you go. Call it a typo. I probably won't edit that one out. Boom. And then now we're going to do the same exact thing uh, except for Super Reader. So, properties. And this is the whole reason I'm a big fan of the uh, uh, premium guide because then you just get some wonderful PowerShell uh, that you're just going to run and make this all go away super reader account instead of having to type and if you would all just buy it then you wouldn't have to see a video of me typing all right so equals like that and then contoso sp super reader close that and then dollar sign 
variable dot update like that boom those settings are done so now you won't have to get any error, or any error messages warning messages you hadn't set those up not really anything that was too big of a deal but it's easier just to knock it out all right so we'll close out of that exit um, you'd also you sorry you'd want to repeat all those steps for my you do not want to watch me type all that again I'm certain so do both the user policy changes here and then do the PowerShell again for my uh, and the nature of being complete and I think the last thing I just want to go to application management manage service applications and the search service application where is he right there content sources well that's already done we know so crawl log Oh, look at that. So last time we had 36 successes. Now we have 80 because all that people data got in there. So success. And ladies and gentlemen, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I think our time together is done. Your SharePoint 2013 farm running on Microsoft Azure is up and available and life is perfect for you. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out my other resources. Boom, right there. Or the premium guide boom also right there um, and if you did if you liked the content please subscribe to the channel I'd also appreciate if you have any comments that you leave them down below you know what you'd like to see me do differently maybe a suggestion on a snap timer that doesn't disappear randomly when I make future videos ideas for future videos that helps me also um, then you can always hit me up at Shane's Cows if you have any questions you need any guidance there or if you want to work together www.boldzebras.com Cool? Alright, well thanks and I'll see you next time.